Well, this is not the first or even the most powerful earthquake to hit Christchurch, but it's certainly the most devastating. Let's get more details from Dr. Roger Musson, who's with the British Geological Survey. Is this quake linked to the previous one back in September 2010? Well, yes, it seems so. Uh, ever since that earthquake, there's been a stream of activity uh, in the Christchurch area. Uh, a lot of aftershocks from what, what we refer to as the Darfield earthquake, the one in September last year, mostly moving eastwards towards Christchurch. But uh, tailing off in terms of the number of events and the magnitudes, uh, and usually that's what happens in an aftershock sequence, it decays. Uh, but occasionally, towards the end of it, it suddenly you get a kick, uh, an, another strong earthquake, and it starts all over again. And that, I'm afraid, is what's happened last night. Just show us how much activity there's been in this area since that first major quake. Well, you can see there's hundreds of earthquakes here. Every dot on this map uh, is an earthquake. And this star here is the epicenter of the earthquake in September. And that broke on an east-west fault that goes somewhere like that. Uh, and almost at once, so these smaller earthquakes started happening over this area, and that continued for months until last night, the earthquake here, uh, right underneath Christchurch. This is where Christchurch is. Less powerful than Darfield, but yet so much more damaging. Why? Firstly, it was shallower, and secondly, um, it was so much closer to Christchurch. Uh, I mean, this is a fairly rural area, so there was not an awful lot there to be damaged. Here, you've got the worst possible thing that happens where you have an earthquake occurring directly underneath a major city. Uh, it was also produced unusually strong ground-shaking um, ground foreign earthquake of this size, and that is really far more than people were expecting in Christchurch. The buildings weren't really built to withstand that strength of shaking, and that's why we've seen so much damage and collapse. And presumably, people didn't realize that this was an area which could be threatened by severe earthquakes when Christchurch was built. Well, I mean, nobody knew that these faults existed. And here is the main fault here, uh, but it looks like there are other ones going off in different directions. These faults haven't moved for tens of thousands of years. Um, they are deep in the Earth's crust and they're buried at the surface by river sediment. So if a geologist goes and wanders around the countryside here, he can't see those faults. Nobody knew they existed until the first one moved in September last year and gave people a bit of a surprise. People thought that in terms of New Zealand earthquake hazard, Christchurch was not as much at risk as other places, like Wellington, for example, which everybody knew was on a, on a major fault. Uh, and this just demonstrates the danger from hidden faults uh, that haven't moved for a long time, and they can strike without warning um, in places where you didn't expect them. Dr. Roger Musson from the British Geological Survey, thanks very much indeed for explaining the background to this quake. And as you saw from the map here, many hundreds of earthquakes in this area. And the survey believe that today's quake will be followed by further aftershocks, although the activity hopefully will eventually die down.